in a land that holds a reputation for hosting some of the most venomous animals on the planet. A certain group of critters, feared throughout the world, is surprisingly benign. Scorpions are among the most dangerous arthropods on Earth, claiming thousands of human lives each year. Yet here in Australia, where over a hundred different species are known, none are venomous enough to imperil the life of a human. And there is one in particular that embodies the innocuous nature of scorpions down under more than any other. One of the most placid, inoffensive, and perhaps even endearing of its kind anywhere in the world. And though not often seen, if you look in the right places they can reveal themselves to be surprisingly abundant. You normally think of scorpions as desert animals, but in fact lots of them thrive in habitats just like this. And this particular area that I'm walking through is filled with rocks and logs, a perfect habitat to find them. So let's see if we can succeed in our quest. The scorpions in question belong to the widespread genus Hormurus, which comprises numerous species found not only here in Australia, but through much of the Indo-Pacific. As appears to be the case for many of the animals I opt to feature, Hormurus have had a bit of a bumpy history as far as taxonomy and classification goes. The genus was first recognised in the 1970s, but was subsequently merged with another genus called Leochiles, rendering Hormurus naught but a synonym of the latter. More recent findings, however, have established that Hormurus and Leochiles form two distinct clades, each with their own unique anatomical features thus leading to the revalidation of Hormurus as a genus unto itself, and not merely a synonym of Leochiles. Hormurus are often referred to as rainforest scorpions, but while many species do indeed hail from the wet tropics, they are by no means limited to such a habitat. Here in southeast Queensland, patches of dry eucalypt forest provide ample sanctuary for these scorpions to flourish in large numbers, just a stone's throw from Brisbane City. As is very much the norm for scorpions, Hormurus are cryptic, nocturnal animals, but should you know where to look, finding them is none too difficult an ordeal, for the simple flip of a rock is often all it takes to pierce their veil of secrecy. The scorpions, of course, are far from the only creatures that seek shelter in the cool darkness of a subterranean abode, and my will was not so bent upon my target as to render me blind to the countless other curiosities that surrounded me. Pasalids, or best beetles, are staple inhabitants of many a rotting log, and it is upon the decaying wood that they feed. Rather intriguingly, these beetles exhibit a certain degree of sociality, often living in loosely structured family groups comprising both adults and larvae, and they can even communicate with one another through a variety of different sounds. This familial fellowship is much to the benefit of the larvae, for the adults not only shelter but actively nurture them, supplying them with chewed up food that their own undeveloped mandibles will be too soft and weak to tackle. There are hunters here too. Centipedes are ever a riveting find, and there's something especially noteworthy about this one. Its anatomy, namely its disproportionately thick terminal legs, would indicate that it's Cormocephalus westwardi, an identity made all the more plausible by the prevalence of said species in this very area. But Hormocephalus westwardi usually has a dark body and a red head, so a uniformly yellow one like this is quite the anomaly. This subterranean world is also a sanctuary for other entities beyond the bounds of the animal kingdom. Fungi spend much of their existence as naught but a network of threads and filaments coursing through the underworld, almost entirely hidden from sight. Yet on those rare occasions that this kingdom, cradled in darkness, arises from the bowels of the earth unto the sunlit world above, it is nearly always a sight deserving of much wonder and marvel. From the weathered surface of a fallen branch, the fruiting bodies of Tremella mesenterica erupt, crude and shapeless, yet with vibrant colours that bestow upon them a strange form of beauty. Even more spectacular, perhaps, is Ramaria, with an intricate branching growth and vivid colours that give it all the likeness of a coral, these fungi are among the most stunning sights in the undergrowth, and their value goes well beyond the transient glamour of their fruiting bodies, for beneath the surface of the earth, 
They form intimate, mutual partnerships with plants, augmenting their access to nutrients and thus aiding their growth. Onwards I wandered, meandering and seemingly aimless in my course, yet ever guided by a steadfast resolve to track down the animal I had travelled here to film. Many a rock was lifted along the way, and many an ant colony, disturbed and aggravated, caught me by surprise in the process, but ere long my efforts were rewarded. After a little bit of searching, this is what I'm here for. Quite a sizeable Hormurus. Now, I'm not exactly in the most comfortable of positions here, so let's try and get this scorpion somewhere else and take a closer look. So this is quite a sizeable individual. Oh, do not go in my sleeve, please. That is a... <laughs> they're very docile scorpions, but that does not at all mean that they're especially cooperative. So as she was getting uh, worryingly close to demonstrating with my sleeve, these scorpions have something of a proclivity for squeezing into tight, narrow crevices. And a quick look at her anatomy. Of course, there's a plane will show you how superbly adapted she is for that very habit. Everything about her appearance, from her body to her pincers, is flattened, and that allows her to wedge herself into some extremely narrow crevices beneath rocks and beneath logs like where we found this one. And there, she's very safe from anything that may try to make a meal of her. Once I'd found that first individual, Things only went uphill from there. Beneath nearly every rock and log I examined thenceforth, a Hormurus had opted to reside. This one, unlike the last, is a male, easily recognisable based off his slightly longer pincers, with a pronounced notch on the inside, which he uses to more effectively grip onto the female's pincers during courtship. But most heartening of all were the juveniles, so abundant that oftentimes I'd find multiple beneath a single, small piece of debris. Diminutive as they are, it was these youngsters that felt like the most significant find of the day, for their prevalence was a clear sign that this population of scorpions was well and truly thriving. Hormurus may be innocuous compared to its notorious counterparts elsewhere in the world, but think not that its placid demeanour makes it any less formidable a hunter or an adversary in combat. The pincers, robust, heavily armoured and extremely strong, are more than sufficient to crush other animals into submission. Hormurus has also mastered the art of using the environment to its advantage. By wedging itself into a tight crevice with naught but its pincers facing outwards and exposed, the scorpion puts itself into a position where it's virtually unassailable. For a potential predator, attacking from behind is simply not an option. There is no choice but to try and take the scorpion head on, and place itself wholly at the mercy of those huge, hefty pincers. That the pincers do most of the heavy lifting in both hunting and defence shouldn't come as any surprise given the scorpion's overall appearance. But the same can't be said about that other key aspect of a scorpion's armature, the long, flexible metasoma at the rear, tipped with a venomous sting. This is a scorpion's trademark feature, its most iconic, intimidating, and lethal weapon. Yet in Hormurus, its appearance is almost comical, coiled passively to the side, and so tiny that it looks befitting for a scorpion three quarters smaller. The sting of Hormurus is far from an imposing sight, and its underwhelming visage is matched only by the near pitiful weakness of the venom it delivers. I have once been stung on the finger by a Hormurus, which was quite the achievement given their temperament, and after a few minutes of very minor pain, I had completely forgotten which finger had been on the receiving end, which I guess could mean one of two things. Either the sting was so weak that the effects were entirely forgettable within a matter of minutes, or it's given me dementia. All jokes aside, however, it's clear that the sting of Hormurus is not something worth fretting about. This scorpion's venom isn't a particularly potent or a lethal weapon, but that does not mean that it isn't unique and fascinating in its own special way. Scorpion venom is complex, consisting of hundreds of unique chemical compounds, and such a diverse cocktail of toxins is ever so necessary given these arachnids must face off against a broad array of animals, both predator and prey, 
that can differ greatly in physiology and how they react to various venom components. But the complexity and versatility of scorpion venom comes at a cost. Its production is very resource intensive, and I'm standing on an ant nest. Its production is very resource intensive, and it's thus hardly surprising that scorpions have evolved to minimize the use of their venom wherever possible. At the most basic level, this often means reserving the usage of their sting for when it's absolutely necessary, such as when subduing a larger or more vigorous prey. And when defending themselves, scorpions may initially make use of what's known as a pre-venom, which is more simplistic in composition and far less taxing to replenish. But should the perceived danger persist, the scorpion will transition to its proper venom, a more complex mixture rich in proteins and peptides. Being frugal with venom is by no means unique to Hormurus, but there's another aspect of its venom usage wherein Hormurus does seem to stand out from other scorpions. When exposed to a persistent threat over an extended period of time, as simulated in an experiment involving the repeated pestilence of these scorpions over the course of six weeks, the overall composition of the animal's venom changed. Toxins that target the scorpion's invertebrate prey were produced in lower quantities at the end of the experimental period. Meanwhile, toxins that targeted mammals were produced in increased quantities, leading to a venom composition that was overall more heavily optimized for defense against the scorpion's mammalian predators, with the drawback of being less effective for hunting and by allocating resources toward the production of venom components that are most necessary for the scorpion's particular situation, Hormurus is able to further alleviate the costly nature of maintaining its toxic arsenal. Scorpions are among nature's ultimate survivors, and their over 400 million year tenure on this planet has seen the evolution of some truly intriguing species. And take a look at this video if you want to learn about one of the most bizarre scorpions to have ever lived. Otherwise, check out this video to meet a spider that bears a strangely scorpion-like appearance. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on my next adventure.